All right. I'm starting to scales on this one. Uh, as you can see, I have uh, a kind of a grid pattern laid out here that I'm going to use to kind of keep my uh, scale straight and the, the flow of the scales even. And I'm going to be using uh, four different scale tips, different sizes. And the one I started off here with is, uh, is the biggest one. And I uh, don't know exactly what size it is. It's about nine millimeters or so. And, but the bigger scales go, and I've got them kind of coordinated off. This is one, and then the, the two scale tip that I'll use will be here. That's the next size, and it'll also kind of go down here on the back of the tail. And then I've got a little bit smaller one, three, that'll go above the head here and on the belly. And then I've got an even smaller one that I'll use right at the edge of the tail, the caudal peduncle area here, and right on top of the head, and then maybe around some of the fins here. Um, but I've got this side done already, so let me go ahead and show you that. Um, the cheek scales I freehand, uh, just because they're, they're all different kind of different shapes, they're irregular shape, different sizes. So they're not a specific, specific pattern on here. So I do all those by, by hand and I use a little flat tip, uh, just a rounded flat tip here to do that. And I also use this little chisel shape one here to uh, do the lateral line. You can see the lateral line's a little bit darker here. So and I'll show you that when it gets closer time to do that. Uh, but I'm going to start over here and the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to burn all the big ones here first. I'm not going to go all the way to the lateral line. I want to stay away from that. And then same on the top. I'll do like a scale of so width away from the lateral line and go up. And then when I get ready to do the scales that have the lateral line in them, then I'll use the, uh, I think it's the number two, uh, scale tip that I'm using that'll go because they're just a little bit smaller than the rest of the scales around them so I'll use that to make the lateral line and then stitch the two together so it'll it'll blend in and then again on the cheeks I'm gonna I'm gonna freehand all that so I'm not drawing a grid there so uh, let me get started here Trying to stay accurate to the number of scales on these. Um, the lines that I've got going horizontally kind of represent a row. And there's uh, six to eight scales from the lateral line to the top of the back. And there's uh, 12 to 15 or 16 from the lateral line down. So it varies from fish to fish. And there's 70, so 50 to 70 depending on the species from the front of the lateral line to the back. So uh, it's not gonna be perfectly exact, but I'm gonna try to stay on as close as I can to that. See, I'm not gonna go any closer to that. I'm gonna stay away from that. And I start a line here midway and then I can go forward to the front. It's a little harder for me to go forward. Some guys like to go forward, some guys have to go backwards, but but I can I can do either one, but it's just easier in my opinion to go from forward back. So it helps me keep them straighter, I think. And if you notice, I'm not butting them right up against each other. I'm not doing, I think a lot of people have a tendency to go, you make the scale, then they go right there to make the other scale. And that's not how it is. There's a little gap in between each scale. Now they'll get closer on some, 
but you can kind of see how they let little gap and I'll, you can see me doing it here You also have to kind of play with the heat because different areas of this wood is harder than others. And um, so sometimes you have to uh, change your heat settings. Cause I notice when I do it on my scrap on this one side here, it seems like it's not hot enough. But then when I touch this side, <laughs> it's like, it's too hot. And when you get on the curve, you kind of kind of have to roll it. It was a little too hot there. And it's kind of hard to tell also, but when I when I touch and pull, I kind of pull back a little bit so that it leaves that relief behind it. And the crappie scales, they they come out and they're kind of flat on the end. They don't they don't just come out and curve like a regular draw down. They don't. A lot of people will do their scales and they just do a, a curve. And and some fish are that way, but a crappie is not. A crappie scale comes out. It's almost more of an octagon shape, kind of. It's kind of flat on the end versus round, so rounded. And you don't need to force it. Just You kind of let the tip do the work. Just set it under light pressure. flatten that just a tiny bit. I think I got a little bit too much of a bow in it. Sometimes you have to put a little bit of a bow in it. You want the you want the arc of the tip to touch first. But I think I had too much in this one. Still not doing right. Well, it is kind of rolled there a little bit, so. So I'm gonna get the rest of these done off camera. You got the idea what I'm doing here and when I switch over to a different size and I'll come back and show a little bit as I'm doing that okay so I've gotten to my other reference line here so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn this off and let it cool off and then I'm going to uh, change these tips out for the number two tip. And it's just a little bit smaller by a millimeter or so. I don't know if you can see that. You know where to reach it. So just by a millimeter or so, but it is a little bit smaller. And I'll use that from the back down here to the bottom of the pot 
caught up a dunkel and right up here around the gills and then when I get up in here I'm gonna switch to the the third one for the top of the uh, head and the bottom of the belly so let me let that get cooled off and uh, we'll switch over all right so I switched the scale tips over for the smaller one and I'm gonna start back here and work my way further back here probably can't really tell it here that it's smaller but it is by just like say like a millimeter or two smaller and I had to adjust the heat a little bit lower for some reason this one burns a little hotter actually burns a little better again I don't want to get too close to the lateral line And I'll stitch all these together here with the smaller one in a minute. Now I'm going to stop right here and I'll go a little bit smaller with that number three back here. Now on top here I want to follow this curve I'm not gonna go straight back like I did here so I want to be able to follow this curve around so I've got to be real careful because I want the scales the rows to look like they're curving slightly like that Again, I'm going to stay at least a scale width away from the lateral line. All right, so I have put on my small one that I'm going to use for the areas of the third area here in front of the head on the belly and the lateral line and right back here and then up here on the scales and then I'll use it to tie in the scales to the other side so um, I'm gonna finish up these up here And this one's only maybe two millimeters smaller than the second one. I want to wait till I do that lateral line before I get filling that in. But I will stitch these together here so you can kind of see how I blend them together here. It's kind of tricky on some of them. And 
and then I've got one more smaller one that I'm gonna do the very edge detail with. So some of the edges like up here, I'll use that one on. See, there's one little place there where it didn't quite reach it, so I'll just take the edge of it and blend that on in there. Same with right there. I'm just taking the very tip of it, just kind of filling that in. Actually, I'm going to use the little one to fill those in down there also. Let's do the belly here. One thing to be careful of, if you've got any super glue anywhere on your piece, like I used a little bit of super glue to, to temporarily put the fins in, and when that heat burns that super glue, it puts off a horrible, horrible fumes that instantly burn your eyes. And from what I understand, it's not, if you get too much, it can blind you. So be really careful of that when you're burning scales and you have come across anywhere that may have had super glue on it. So don't ever try to burn an area that's got, if you know it's got super glue on it, don't, don't try to burn it. Use a, a small carving bit or something if you need to put a scale on it. Do it by hand. Again, I'm going to stop here and use the next smallest one for the vent area of the fish because I will put like a little, just a little uh, mark there for uh, the vent. And then I'll do the smaller scales around that. And I have these lines. I'm going to keep following this curve around here. Okay, I'm going to stop there and I'll switch over to the little one to, uh, Finish the head part here. Uh, get the belly here now. I'm just comparing this side to see where I stopped and started using the smaller ones over here, and I think that's about it. Again, these scales don't have to be perfectly placed because they're not perfectly placed and uniform on a real one. They have the illusion of being, but if you ever look at one real close, I mean, there's a lot of them that are, but if you look at them real close, there's a lot that's not also. I think it has to do with the flow that you give it. Maybe even use this pen here. Cause I wanna make sure I stay on that line.
All right, again, I'm gonna finish that little area out there with a smaller tip, which I think that just about covers it, except for the cheeks. So let me put the small scale tip on and I'll finish these small little areas here and touch up. And then I'll start burning the, um, the actual little divots or the line in those row of scales there. And I'm not trying to keep these even because they're not quite even through here and they're kind of irregular shaped and spaced a little bit different. So I'm purposely making them irregular. And then there's a little roll back here by this gill plate that kind of elongates. Got this little break in the gill here, little flap edge. And I kind of messed up the carving. It's close. This little bony plate right here actually is supposed to come farther back here. But I didn't catch it missed it so and there's only a few these are kind of these are kind of funky down here too So, now I'll burn these on with this little flat tip, this little flat rounded tip, but in the meantime, I'm going to put this square flat one on and burn the, and burn the, uh, the lateral line in now. And I do that by... If you look at the lateral line real close, I'll draw this scale big where you can see it. The lateral line is a, um, it's a little protrusion that comes out. And that, that part is raised and then this part is kind of sunken down in here. So, that's what I'm going to do with this uh, little flat piece here. 
I'll be able to come in and touch and pull and touch and pull outside this line all the way down. And this is not one that I made. This is actually one that was uh, in, a, in a kit that I bought or a bundle that I bought. Or just random uh, burning tips. I like my high tip, my high tech screwdriver here. <laughs> I need to get one that fits it. Um, the ones I had were all too big or too little. Again, I'm just touching and pulling so it kind of flattens out that part of the scale. And it doesn't matter if it goes all the way to the edge of the scale, they actually don't. But the way I'm holding it, it's shallower on the it's shallower on the end of the scale than it is at the at the front, if that makes sense. That leaves a little tiny ridge there. Then when I get all the scales burned, I gotta go in, I'm gonna buff it all off with my Scotch-Brite wheel. And then I gotta go in and uh, put in the uh, growth rings. All right, so I got this smaller tip on here. Let's see if I can do this where you can see it.
and there's two little indentions in this part of the skull this is actually like a bony plate here so I'm gonna put those in right there I'm going ahead and defining the line here because it's it's kind of like a hinge there. It's got a little bit of flex and play in it. Very smallest scale tip I have on here, and then finish in the top of the head here and the back of the tail here, and probably a little bit around here and then around the vent in the bottom of the cheek here. So let me let that cool off a second, and uh, I'll come back here and get started on with this one. All right, I got the smaller tip on here. And I'm just gonna go down through here. Let me start down here on the tail. And I'm just gonna fill in these uh, smaller scale areas here. that's got it so the next step is to um, buff it off and I'll do that off camera and then show you and then start burning the um, the uh, growth rings in I'll get it out in a minute so I'll be back in a sec All right, so I'm gonna start doing the growth ring zone. And all I'll be doing is just going through and putting little tiny rings on every scale. This scale, this crappie is gonna be about four years old. So I'm gonna put four growth rings on each scale. <laughs> now I've already done this side here and I think they held up pretty well under the buffing so I'm not going to go over them I'm just going to kind of do these other ones here I do need to put my my glasses on here that's a little more magnifying so I can see better and I'll try to keep this in camera I'm not going to show you all of them just because it's gonna take so long, but I'll just show you um, the start of them. I 
I was kidding about the number of gross rooms, by the way. So you get the idea, I'm going to uh, do the rest of them off camera and then I will show you the results when it's done. Okay, that's going to do it for part three of the black crappie wood carving project i've got all the scales done now, i apologize for the video running so long but there was a lot of content here i wanted to include in this one uh, especially since i did something new like adding the growth rings um, all that's left now to do is going to be the eyes which is coming up in part four and mounting the fins and then it will be ready to be gessoed and painting will start so I appreciate y'all watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below. And if you like these videos, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, if you hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. So I will see y'all in part four.